Hello everyone, it is Antonetta Mosley of I Follow the Leader and I am here for episode 40. I can't believe that Conversations with I Follow the Leader now has 40 episodes as of this one. Happy 40th. Thank you for listening, for watching, for being a part of Conversations with I Follow the Leader. We really appreciate every listener. We appreciate you liking our podcast, sharing with others, and hope that it really has resonated with you. I Follow the Leader is a place where those of a different feather can soar together. And we just thank you for being with us, for supporting us, and for being a caring and courageous change agent who is willing to help push the pace of progress, who wants people to feel celebrated, not tolerated, and who wants diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives to be strategic, measurable, and sustainable. Thank you so much. The topic for today may have surprised you when you saw it. Today, we are going to talk about x-rays and no screen time and EKGs. As you know, if you follow me at all individually, you will know that I am really calling myself a courage curator. And that is because I want to help as many people as possible cultivate courage to help create more of those spaces where people feel celebrated, not tolerated. I also believe that courage is a choice. And the beautiful thing about courage is it can be cultivated. While it is extremely difficult, and it can be uncomfortable, it can be cultivated, which means we can make it a habit, we can improve upon it. And that really excites me because every time I talk to change agents across the country, I ask the question, have you ever taken a courage course in school or had a class that was really about courage? And I have received very few, if any, yeses. I just spoke to over 200 change agents last week and no one in that room raised their hand. And so I want to encourage you that we can cultivate courage. I want to thank those of you who are a part of my caring, courageous change agents community. I send a text called Courage Candy every Monday through Friday. This week's topic is burnout. Next week's is relaxations is relaxation and last week was boundaries. So I often come up with the topics uh, often a month or so in advance. And little did I know when I came up with the topic for burnout this week that I would be experiencing some different health challenges, but also positive things as well, because that is often how life works, as you all know. So if you have been around for the past year, you may remember that last September, I partially ruptured my Achilles. So it was bad enough that I had to go through a boot stage for a very long time and crutches stage for a very long time and all of that healing but not bad enough where I needed surgery. And so even still today, the goal is, can I improve my Achilles enough where I will not have to have surgery? And so it's getting to that year mark. And so I just scheduled a, an appointment because I'm worried that it's not getting better enough. And, and what do I do about that? And so I went in last week, actually, and they decided they wanted to do some x-rays. And when you talk about just anxiety inducing, um, getting x-rays, or obviously I got an MRI before, uh, just that waiting of what's gonna happen, what are they gonna say? And what I want to say is, you know, something I tell people is that the opposite of courage, the opposite of choosing courage is choosing complacency. And so with something, even like my Achilles injury, I could decide to be complacent and just wait it out. 
out without checking in. However, I made the courageous decision to go in and I may receive bad news or I may receive okay news or great news. Uh, I received okay news. So there was nothing on the x-ray that concerned the doctor or made him think at this point that I need an MRI, which was really positive. Um, and he just let me know, you know, I've told you from the beginning, right? Even pro athletes, it can take them a year to completely heal their Achilles. Obviously, I am not a pro athlete. Uh, back in the day when I ran track in college and you were injured, that really was your job. And so you spent every day rehabbing, right? I don't spend all of my time right now rehabbing my Achilles. I have gone to PT. Uh, I was going to PT twice a week. They moved to once a week. And then the last month, I've been really waiting for my appointment to go in and trying to do pool workouts, et cetera. Um, and, you know, the, the doctor also told me maybe I'm pushing it. So I don't even think I'm doing enough, but he's like, maybe you're pushing too much. And, you know, I like to relate everything to DEI and have related my Achilles to, to DEI. Uh, and just talked about the, the courage to continue on a lot. And I, I want to encourage you that sometimes we may fear going in and learning what what's wrong with us, uh, what's wrong with our organization. And so we see so many organizations with who we work with and those who we don't work with that I follow the leader who wait too long because they don't want to hear how their employees really feel. And so unfortunately, no matter if you learn it or not, it's still happening. So whether I went to get this x-ray or not, my Achilles would be the same. And so we can often fear so much what the prognosis is or what the answer is to a question that we just refuse to ask or be courageous. And so that's what I really love about I Follow the Leader's cultural audit is because it really takes organizations through that process of asking the questions of employees of how are we doing? How can we improve? How are you feeling? Do you feel the sense of belonging? Can you bring your whole self to work, et cetera? I see so many organizations refusing to ask the question because they don't want to know the answer. However, you cannot heal if you do not know the prognosis. And so I want to encourage you, whether it's personally or professionally, we have to give people the option to provide us with feedback. So important to give people that option to share how things are going, especially if you're a supervisor, et cetera. Are you allowing 360 feedback? Are you asking people their opinion? Are you asking people how they can improve? And are you making sure that you're reaching your team members in a way that best helps them to move forward, to be courageous, to be their best selves as well? So that is the x-ray part. I will continue moving forward. I'm actually going to talk uh, to another PT person and just get an opinion as far as am I doing the right exercises? Am I moving forward in the best way possible? Um, and do I need to make even more of a commitment than I did before? So that's something I don't write, I don't know right now how I would fit it in my schedule. However, if my healing is a commitment for me, if it's a priority for me, then I'm going to have to do whatever I can to heal. If your diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, if your DEI strategy is important to you, you may have to set some other things aside for some time to heal damages that have been there for a while. And so I want to let you know that that disruption, that pushing the pace of progress often requires stepping outside of your comfort zone and going a little deeper than you have in the past. And you may need to shift some things around to be able to do that adequately. Often with DEI, we, we want to do it ourselves. So obviously one of our slogans is don't DIY your DEI. Because 
if you are not an expert, you cannot do everything. And I understand there's minimal budgets and et cetera, but just like with my Achilles, I am not certified in this. I cannot nurse myself completely back to help. I can assume I can do some positive things, but I'm also going to be prohibiting my progress if I do not get expert guidance. That goes into, um, if you know me, you know I love to read. My goal this year is 36 books. So now we're going to move into the no screen time. I am reading two awesome books right now by women authors. Uh, one I actually know personally. We were in a group together. And then the other I've been following for a few years online. And both of those books have really been encouraging me as far as making more time for myself, for my health, for my family. And those are already goals I've had this year that I've really been working on and doing some courageous things, making some courageous choices around prioritizing, right? Prioritizing peace, prioritizing time with family, knowing that the work is going to be there that everything doesn't have to be accomplished this week, this month, this year, right? So always moving positively towards our purpose, but not getting to the point where we're actually not effective anymore because we are so tired or exhausted or not bringing our full selves because we're not refilling our cups. And in one of the books, the suggestion was a no screen time. And so this woman, her name is Maddie. Uh, so what Maddie does is her and her family, she has three children uh, and a husband. And from a certain time Friday to a certain time Saturday, they do no screen time. And so my husband and I decided to implement that. And last week was our first no screen time. So we went from 7 p.m. Friday to 12 noon on Saturday. And we're going to try to implement that all every week in September as well and just see how it goes. I want to let you know that the first time we tried it, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Uh, we really got to just connect with each other. We talked to each other more, right? Um, me, Thomas, and our dog, Remy, got to just really spend some great time together because we weren't on the phone. We weren't watching TV. We weren't scrolling, etc. So we went on a double date uh, and then just hung out and talked. And then Saturday morning, we tried to start a new family tradition uh, that was really sweet and fun. And I cooked breakfast and it was just a really great time. And we just connected and, and really talked. And so we're in a marriage group. And so we told our marriage group about it on Sunday and some of them may do it as well. And so I want to encourage you if you need less screen time, which let's be honest, uh, probably 90% of us need less screen time. I want to encourage you whether you're like me and you don't have kids and you may have a, a husband, a dog, or even if you're single, right? Can you spend some quality time with your loved ones without any screens for an extended amount of time? And so really excited to continue this no screen time. I will let you know how it goes. If you decide to try this, please let me know how it goes. And I will also share make sure in the show notes that I share um, Maddie's book, which is called Everyday Magic. And the other book that I'm reading has just been really encouraging me to take a step back. And, you know, a lot of people only live to 80 years old. And so what would that look like? Um, what are my priorities? And there's a really good uh, print out in the book to help people think through where they are now, how much time they have left with their family members, with their children, and really just helps you be introspective of, am I spending my time the way I should? 
This book is called The Joy of Missing Out. And it seems like, what? The Joy of Missing Out. However, I think just like with that no screen time, sometimes we have to say no. Sometimes we have to make our circle smaller. Sometimes we have to protect our peace. And so are we going to be courageous enough to allow ourselves to miss out on some things? To say that not everything is a priority in this season. And that's something, um, if you are a people pleaser, right, a caregiver, a giver, uh, a recovering perfectionist, it can be extremely hard to, right, miss out or to feel like you're not helping others every time someone has a request. And so, really want to encourage you and this is something I'm constantly working on is we can't say no we can't say yes to everyone we're going to have to say no to some people and we got to make sure we're saying yes to ourselves our priorities our mission statement our purpose on this earth because we don't know how long we have so just really grateful for tanya dalton who i know and uh, spoiler alert she will be on the podcast soon and so you do not want to miss that conversation again uh, that is one of her books she has a new book that is out I will link both in the show notes for you so if you really want to focus on how to make your time more magical how to actually enjoy missing out on some things so that you can be more present those books are books I would recommend both are geared towards women However, I believe you can find nuggets in every book, in every resource if you want to. That takes us to our third and final point of today's podcast, number 40, which is EKG. So for the first time, I got an EKG. Um, so yeah, on Monday, I had an EKG for the first time. So, um, you know, I had come off this great weekend of quality time, um, with my husband, our mentee through Big Brothers Big Sisters, had a birthday last week and he had a birthday party on Saturday. So we had all this great quality time, date night with friends, um, our no screen time. And then we had a birthday party to go to. So I was really full and just happy, um, joyful, really great weekend Sunday. We watched service and just did some other things that we needed to get done. And for me, uh, I love my home. I love my home. Uh, I've decorated pretty much, you know, everything in my home. Uh, and so really love my home. It's a place of peace for me. I'm an introvert, even though many people think that I'm an extrovert. I'm an introvert, so having my place of peace, which is my home, uh, is really important to me. And so as much as it definitely drives my husband crazy, I love organization, right? Marie Kondo is amazing. Um, my books are color coordinated over there if you like the home edit. And so our cabinets are, uh, the way I like them, they're pretty pristine um the way our i like our fridge is pretty pristine and we have different drawers and labels and and all of the things and all the spices are labeled and so i realized recently okay we need to do a cleaning because things are just getting a little too hectic for me which doesn't allow me the space to feel right as good in the house if things are in a, in a certain order, etc. Um, but of course, life happens. So sometimes it's just like, all right, we're going to keep moving. 
However, I decided let's do a little early fall cleaning. Let's do it slowly over weeks. And so I started with the two of the kitchen cabinets that hold the spices and, and all of the things. And I was excited and my husband was really great and he, and he helped me. And so he was looking at all the expiration dates and I was like pulling everything out of the closet and rearranging. And then I was pretty exhausted and, and thinking about the week. And then I was ex experiencing really bad chest pain in my sternum. So even touching it now, um, which the doctor said that would happen, but even touching it now, it feels like, oh gosh, um, what's wrong with me? So I started, you know, what do you do? You Google your symptoms. So I started Googling my symptoms. I also, thank you, Fitbit Watch started monitoring my heart rate on my watch. I realized that it dropped pretty low. So my resting heart rate is 67 and it was at 53. So I was a bit worried about that. Um, started Googling, what do I do? Also started trying to relax my mind, right? Because often we can exacerbate things if we're not at a place of peace. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be courageous, I'm gonna breathe, I'm going to write, really focus on relaxing and, and thinking through this and for me praying, right? Do I need to go to, to the emergency room? Am I okay? What do I need to do? And so just talk through it, read through different things. And was like, okay, this isn't something that, that's constant or where I can't breathe. And um, what I thought it was, it actually was, which, you know, if you know you're, if you're a Googler, you know, a lot of times it is not what you think it is. However, I'm probably saying this wrong, so sorry for the medical people. You can correct me and pronounce it for me because I did not look it up and, and listen to it first. But what I have is costochondritis. And um, so that's what I thought I had. And it's a condition that causes pain and tenderness in your chest. And it's an area, happens in the area called the cost, I should stop trying to say these words. The cost, the cost thernal joints where the ribs meet the breastbone. The pain affects only a small area and does not get worse when you move around. And it says, what causes it? It says, it could be caused by heavy lifting, <laughs> hard exercise, and illness, etc. Um, and then on one of the sites, it showed that like, oh, if you're lifting, if you're reaching and lifting in the cabinets, well, of course, to help with my peace <laughs> and my serenity, I was cleaning my cabinets the that night and i was like okay well i think this is what i have um so how can it be treated stretching exercises a heating pad on the painful area a few times a day um the doctor i went today just to urgent care just to right make sure i mean when it's something to do with your breathing or your heart really important just to get it checked out and so Again, I was making sure yesterday, just reading through, and if anything was where I really couldn't breathe, of course, was going to go immediately into the ER, but I felt comfortable going to sleep just based on reading and everything and how I was personally feeling. And so when I woke up and I still felt this pain, which again, uh, now finding out that that's normal, that I'm going to have th this pain here for a little bit. Uh, but that's when I was like, okay, let me, let me go to urgent care, uh, check this out. And so I got an EKG to my knowledge for the first time. I don't remember ever getting a, an EKG before. And then I got just some medication to help with it. Uh, but really it's just, you know, resting, uh, my back hurts, but my back always hurts, but it is connected to again, this moving around. And so, yeah, it was a really interesting last week, right? With highs and lows, with courageous choices, with with really having to look out for myself, look out for my health. And right, that's not something that is just going to be this week or, or last week. 
it's something we we have to really be conscious of is are we making the best decisions for ourselves for our health for our family for our peace for our happiness i talk to so many change agents who are in this place of complacency in this place of not moving of of having so many excuses for why they can't have the life they deserve and i want to let you know again that the opposite right that if you're i'm sorry that if you're not choosing courage you're choosing complacency if you're not choosing courage you're choosing complacency and I think it's so important. And I have a friend uh, at a speaking engagement recently who said, is there right a third area? And I believe sometimes you will be choosing complacency because you're right getting ready to make a courageous decision or you've already made the courageous decision uh, to leave, to better yourself, to be in a different environment. And there's that kind of in limbo phase um, before you can fully go into that courageous choice. However, if you are in that complacency phase too long, the world is missing your voice. They're missing your spirit. They're missing who you are. And so I want to encourage you to really think of it as those two choices, courage on one hand, complacency on the other, and what will you choose? And sometimes the courageous choice, right, is to rest. Sometimes the courageous choice is to lie down. Sometimes the courageous choice is to say no. Sometimes the courageous choice is to turn the screen off. And so I don't want you to, to think that courage always means acting, jumping. A lot of times courage is stillness. A lot of times courage is that quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I'm going to try again tomorrow. A lot of times courage is just that hard choice of I'm going to keep going. I'm going to be gritty. It's going to be okay. And so I just want to encourage you all as we get ready to go into a new month, as we get ready uh, for the last four months of the year for you to really have some courage contemplation. What are areas of your life that you need to make more courageous choices on? What are areas of your life you need to have the courage to say no? Do you have the courage to stop when you need to stop, <laughs> right? Do you have the courage to yield when you need to yield? Do you have the courage to listen to export, experts, whether it's personally or professionally, whether it has to be a deal about culture, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, your health, the mental health, right? Do you have the courage to get the expertise you need? I see so many people who are unwilling to get the help they need and their lives could change for the better. I want to encourage you. It's not always easy, right? I'm going through so many different things, but I wanted to take the time to talk to you because I know courage can be cultivated and I know you can make more courageous decisions that will impact yourself, your family, your community and the world. Yes, the world for better. But it all works together. And the more courageous choices you make from day to day, it will get easier and easier. I'm not saying the butterflies or the stress or the thought of what will happen next will go away. But I am telling you, the more courageous decisions and choices you make for yourself and others, the easier it will be. The more boundaries you set for yourself and others, the easier things will be. It's important. On social media, we often just see the highlight reels. And so it was important for me to talk to you today about just some of the life things I'm going through. Am I still going to smile? Yes. However, it's important that you know people are going through things you may never know. If you follow my Antonetta Answers uh, newsletter on LinkedIn, you will know that I shared what, what for me was a courageous post last week 
about right having an, an eye disease and how that impacts me and just how I had had a rough week but really chose to make the courageous decision to just explore. Uh, I was in Michigan for a speaking engagement. So just to explore and live and be in that moment. And guess what? It was one of my favorite, favorite, most favorite speaking engagements ever. The group was amazing. They were just so giving, so caring. And after shared so many beautiful testimonials with me, about how I changed their lives. However, if I wouldn't have had the courage to take some time for myself, I wouldn't have come to that speaking engagement being my best self. So just want to encourage you, whatever you need today, whether it's the motivation to move forward, to make more courageous choices, or whether you're one of those people who needs to pause, who needs to implement a screen time, uh, right? 24 hours or 12 hours for their family. I want to encourage you, always happy to answer questions. Feel free to reach out to me. And one of the best ways that you can connect with me is through the text messages. And so I send Courage Candy Monday through Friday. That's one of the best ways to stay connected with me because I send it out through this app and I can always respond to people uh, as well. And a lot of people reach out to me and share their thoughts, share how they're feeling. And I love that connection. So if you want to connect with me, one of the best ways is through that text message because I don't text anyone uh, else other than my husband every day. And so really special that those group of people in that community, I actually get to communicate with every day and share ways on how to cultivate courage. I hope you enjoyed episode 40. We talked about x-rays. We talked about no screen time and EKGs, but of course it all relates back to making more courageous choices, to choosing yourself. You deserve it and the world needs you.